All right, joining us on the Sign Forest Hotline is Boston Red Sox relief pitcher Heath Hemry, also a graduate right here in Spartanburg from Broome High School. Heath, how are you today? Good. How's it going? Very good. Oh, Thank you. Well, we appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule to join us. Uh, and right off the bat, you guys are leading the AL East, best record in baseball. And it just seems like you guys are just never going to lose. What's it? What's that feeling like being able to go to the ballpark every day, knowing that you have such a great chance to win? Oh, uh, I mean, it's, it's it's fun. I mean, we show up every day at the ballpark, and we uh, we expect to win. Honestly, uh, it's a fun environment. It's a it's a good atmosphere. We're all like brothers here in the clubhouse. We've been with each other the last two or three years, other than the addition of like JD Martinez, which is help to line up line up out a lot but other than that i mean this group of guys who's been together for a while and 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 we know each other and we're like brothers and we just have fun playing baseball have you ever played on a team that has been this confident uh i don't think i I don't think i have i mean honestly every day we show up to the ballpark we expect to win nine in and nine out there's not a not a night that we don't think we shouldn't win the game Um, no matter the situation who's starting what our lineup looks like uh we expect to win heath you're a south carolina native you went to the college of charleston we mentioned you're from broom high school uh Mm -hmm. and baseball is a big deal here in south carolina there's no doubt but can you try to put into words what it means in boston because i grew up in new england so i have an idea as to what red sox fans are all about what is it like playing up there um, uh, I know it sounds a little bit cliche, but uh, in Boston, baseball is a religion. It, it, it's in the people's blood up there. Uh, they they it's all sports up in Boston in general, but they they uh, hold dear to their their Red Sox and love it. It's not always the uh, easiest environment. I mean, they expect a lot out of the players, and and they expect us to win, and but we expect the same from ourselves. But it's just. Uh, it, it, it's just a religion up there. It's in everybody's blood. That's all they know. Heath, uh, you, you're playing for first-year manager Alex Cora. What, what's it been like playing for him this season? It's, um, it's been great. I mean, he's he's obviously uh, one of the younger managers into the in the game. Uh, in first year, he just he just feels like he he just relates to us. There's guys in the clubhouse that's played with him when he was in the game, still playing. But uh, it's just. He just keeps a really loose atmosphere. He he trusts every single guy in the clubhouse and expects us to get the job done. And uh, it's it's just when you have that loose atmosphere and you know you got somebody behind you that's going to fight for you, going to trust you night in and night out. It, it makes it easy to play. Talking with Heath Hembry, former Broom Centurion, now a member of the the AL East leading Boston Red Sox here on Open Mike Daily. Uh, the playoffs are slowly but surely getting here, but right now the Red Sox are, are chasing a little bit of history. You you have a chance to be the winningest team in the regular season in Major League history. Does that get talked about at all? Um, I guess you can say like we, we know about it in the clubhouse, but it's not something that we necessarily think about night in and night out. Um, we just want to get win a division right now. That's our goal. Uh, win win the division as soon as possible, and we we want to sprint through the finish line, not necessarily limp into it. Uh, and our main objective objective here, our main goal, is to make the last out of the season and win the last game of the, of the MLB season and be the last team standing. So, uh, if the regular season record, if we by chance get that. It's it's good, but it's it's nothing if we don't if we don't win the last game of the year. Being in the bullpen, you have you have a lot of downtime in between games, and, and you hear stories all the time about you know bullpens, you know trying to find ways to entertain themselves during the course of a game. Who who's somebody down in the bullpen that's you know a prankster or a jokes or a joker, and how do how do you guys entertain yourself for that course of a game? Um, I I, I can't say there's necessarily one person that. Uh, that's the jokes there. We, we're all just like this team's been together. This bullpen's been together in the last few years. So we, we're a close, close knit group down there. We're our own little family within a family down the bullpen. So there's, um, there's, there's some good banner going on constantly. Uh, 
like a brotherly love uh, down there. So it's it's uh, I think everybody pitches in uh, and has their own pranks and jokes when when the time's right. But uh, it's just just our own little family that we have down in the bullpen. I mean, it's it's, it's just it's a blast. How do you calculate Jackie Bradley's junior when hitting him fungos? <laughs> I mean, Jackie, there's there's nothing that he can't get to. Um, he he runs on anything. If if it's in the air out center and he can't and he doesn't catch it, there's no chance that it could get caught anyway. So uh, just thinking him playing over and out uh, and knowing that he's uh, got some ties there in South Carolina. It's just, it makes it special to have him on the team. Yeah, you mentioned Jackie Bradley Jr., but you, you guys have one of the best outfielding you know, crew out, out there. How, how much as a pitcher does that give you confidence to go out there knowing that all three of those guys can track down any ball? Oh, yeah. I mean, anybody out there, I mean, they cover every square inch of the outfield. So it's, uh, like I said, I mean, anything, if something's sitting out there and it's not caught, then you know there was no chance for it to ever be caught anyway. So, I mean, you know that uh, anything up in the air is more than likely is going to be out. So it gives you confidence on the mound. I mean, a lot of times you just go out there and you can attack the hitter and challenge them and make them hit it. And knowing that your defense behind you is one of the best that there ever is, and they, they're going to get the out. Heath, what's it like facing the Yankees? And I know you're eight and a half games up, but that's a lineup with Stanton and Sanchez. I mean, they have so much power. What's it like facing those guys individually? And then just what is it like playing in those games? Because New York-Boston is one of the best rivalries in all the sports. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if, if, it, if they have a good lineup, a lot of power in the lineup, and we, we like to think our pitching staff has a lot of power too. So whenever we match up against against those guys is power versus power and uh so it's either they're gonna have their home runs or we're gonna get our strikeouts one or the other so uh but playing in 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 the rivalry and in new york i mean it's it gets crazy they get on you it's it's a loud environment uh you gotta really kind of slow the game down and, and control what's happening but and once when we have the Yankees in Boston out at Fenway Park and we got the whole stadium on our side, it just it flips it flips the tables and you can just feel the energy in the stadium and feel everybody pulling for you each pitch. And um, they know the game and they know the situation and, and they're just really into it each pitch. So it just makes it that much more fun. Heath, since you've been in the big leagues, toughest out you face, toughest guy to face, and just for you personally maybe. For me personally, uh, I'd have to say Edwin Encarnacion. He's got it. He's won his fair share of battles off of me. I think he's got four homers off me. He's got one off me a couple weeks ago too. And I told myself I wasn't gonna let him get me this year, but he got me <laughs> again. <laughs> All right, let, let's finish up with this, Heath. You have a chance to talk to folks here in Spartanburg, as uh, you know, this is where you're doing the radio interview. Who helped you along the way? Coaches, youth league, high school, college. Who helped you become a major league player? Uh, I feel like I had a lot of mentors, a lot of coaches, and a lot of help along the way. I um, I had Terry Floyd when I was out of Burm High School, and that was kind of right when my career was first getting started. And then I went to South Carolina. I was there for a year, but it was brief, and I, I transferred to Spumber Methodist College then. Yeah. Uh, I ran into Matt Williams, who was a uh, was a he was he was young at the time, but he was a really knowledgeable pitching coach, and he was somebody that I kind of was in a point in my career and of kind of being the young stubborn kid, I'd do it my way, or kind of opening up and taking advice and really following somebody's lead as how to mature as a pitcher and. I put a lot of trust in Matt Williams to get me better on the mound uh, mentally and mechanically as far as pitching delivery. And I bought in, and ever since then, I just felt like my career jumped off. And I had a solid season at SMC and went to college at Charleston and still kept in touch and kind of took the things that I'd learned at SMC with me to college at Charleston and then ran into another good pitching coach 
uh, Dan Roselle when I was in Charleston, he he told me how to put in the work ethic and how to work. And so the mix of Matt Williams, who taught me the, as far as the pitching mechanics and the delivery and the basic fundamentals of just pitching and then going to Charleston and running to a guy who taught me how to work day in and day out to work out my craft. And it just kind of meshed into what I am now. Heath, you got into the game yesterday in a big situation uh, facing uh, Ozzy Albies, who homered in the game, I believe, in the sixth inning. When you came in, there were there were runners in scoring position. You got a big strikeout. Walk me through that at bat. Yeah, um, it was kind of an inning I was watching. Uh, I saw uh, Brazier. He got a couple guys on. And my situation throughout the year is kind of coming in the sticky situations late in the ball game and getting a couple outs and getting us out of it. And – I know I had Albies coming up. I knew he had a homer earlier in the game. So my approach was uh, I was going to try to dump a first pitch curveball in, just try to still strike one. I was able to do that, and then that kind of just opened up that bat for me. I was able to use some fastballs, fill some fastballs up, mixed in the slider in. And then uh, with two strikes, I was able to elevate a fastball and get one by him. Heath, thank you so much for your time. Uh, good luck to you and the Red Sox as we head down the stretch. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.